rest of the story. Ed Stratemeyer had been cheated out of a childhood. As a small boy, his time was occupied mostly by reading and studying. After eighth grade, he dropped out of school and got a job. At 27, he was still working in his brother's tobacco shop. Friends more fortunate had already gone on to college, had their adventures, had pursued professions. But there was Ed, precisely where it seemed he had always been, behind the counter of somebody else's establishment, giving his life to somebody else's dream. And so it was on a slow, dull, gray afternoon in 1889 that Ed Stratemeyer, utterly frustrated and longing for what he knew would never be his, tore a big sheet of brown wrapping paper from the roll, he took a pencil and began to write a story. And the words tumbled freely from his imagination to form the tale of a young man's success. The sort of success that Ed was certain that he would never capture for himself. The story was called Victor Horton's Idea. When it was finished, Ed sent the brown wrapping paper manuscript to a boy's magazine in Philadelphia. Weeks later, he received a letter from an editor informing him that his story had been accepted. And enclosed was a check for $75. That was six times what Ed earned per week in his brother's tobacco store. And so, an author was born. But this is the rest of the story. Ed wrote and sold more stories in the months that followed. Eventually, he was hired as an editor for the juvenile publisher Street & Smith. There he might have stayed for the rest of his life, writing an occasional dime novel for his own amusement, had real-life history not intervened. For in 1898, in the progress of the Spanish-American War, Admiral George Dewey steamed into Manila Bay, seizing front pages and imaginations nationwide. It was Ed Stratemeyer's story about the victorious Admiral Dewey. Now remember this. It was Stratemeyer's story about the victorious admiral and about two boys who had stowed away on the Commodore's flagship. It was that story that transformed Ed from an anonymous literary dreamer into the most successful adventure author of his or perhaps anybody else's time. The thrill-packed novel, Under Dewey at Manila, sailed through four printings. Publishers begged Ed for more stories like it, and they got more. Dictating 7,500 words from 9 to 5 each day, Ed Stratemeyer managed to produce more than 1,300 books throughout his profitable career. He used a lot of pen names, both masculine and feminine. That accounts for the fact that you do not recognize his own real one, but the immortal characters he created have long since become a part of our vernacular. Heroes and heroines with names like Tom Swift and Nancy Drew, the Bobsy Twins, the Hardy Boys, and dozens more none of whom might ever have come to life in the first place had Ed Stratemeyer not written an adventure novel called Under Dewey at Manila. Well, now it can be told. When Dewey surprised the world in 1898, defeating the Spanish at Manila Bay, Ed Stratemeyer had just finished his story, his fiction, his novel about a couple of imaginary stowaways on a battleship, but the publisher was impressed with the coincidental similarities between what Ed had written as fiction and what Dewey had accomplished as fact. And hoping to ride the crest of this public fascination, the publisher changed the title of Ed's novel accordingly and then set it out not as fiction, but as fact. Not as a book, but as news. And now you know the rest of the story.